Saturday night in Gary, Indiana, a night which will see much crime. Hey, come on, y'all open up and move it out of here. Let's go, man. Back up. Almost 60% of the population here is black. Nearly 80% of the crime committed by blacks in Gary is against blacks. Yet, in the last two years, crimes of violence have decreased in Gary. There is an important reason for much of the reduction of crimes of violence in Gary. It is the participation of black citizens who care, who patrol their own streets on guard for trouble. Our citizen patrol, these people volunteer their time, their uh, cars, to assist the police as a supplementary force to help stamp out crime in, in all communities of our city. And the results are we sure decrease in crimes in areas that uh, at one time was uh, very high uh, crime areas because of the participation of the citizens in that community, in that area. Get over there. Let's mm -hmm. see what's... what's... Yeah, that thing looks clean there. If they... Chief uh, Roy Wilkins of the NAACP says the excuses for crimes that blacks used to use, such as poverty, discrimination, unemployment, are no longer acceptable. How do you feel about these excuses? Do you accept them? No, I do not accept those excuses. I accept no excuse for uh, leading and uh, going into crime. Uh, those those excuses have almost become cliches. Uh, they may have been true in the past, but I don't feel that they're true now. The man seated next to me is Charles Boone. He is the police chief of Gary, Indiana. He is the one of whom Roy Wilkins, the NAACP leader, describes as one of the few black voices here and there who are demanding that black criminals be put in jail. I'm Richard Whitcomb, and I'm in Gary, Indiana, to report on what the black citizens of this urban community are doing to end what Chief Boone says is the curious us blacks together philosophy that gives Negro criminals a license to steal and to prey upon the Negro community. During the next 30 minutes, we're going to measure the measure of black acceptance of black crime that could also determine the fate of the long, hot summer in both Gary and in Miami, Florida. Line that wasn't true. 
our citizens uh, cooperating more? Yes, they are. You're getting cooperation from all phases of life. You're getting from the clergy, from the businessmen, from the housewives, from the students. Everyone is becoming involved. They're beginning to take a realistic look at a, at a real problem. Up until recent months, and I'm speaking within the last uh, three to six months, there was a great reluctance on the part of the average person in uh, these areas of our community to cooperate with the police. I think we've made a definite effort now to prove to these people we're sincerely interested in their problems. We're increasing the police coverage, and as a result of other programs, uh, we see a decided trend to our advantage so far as cooperation. This is the emergency room of Jackson Memorial Hospital in Miami. Graphic evidence of Dade County crime. The victims of crime wheeled in, day in, day out, every day of the week for emergency treatment. Crime is high in Miami. In fact, the city had the highest rate in the nation in 1970. But despite a common belief that black-on-black -black crime is on the rise here, only 10% of all crimes in the city were committed by blacks against blacks. While Miami Police Chief Garmeyer speaks of cooperation by the black community in solving crimes, some officers on the beat complain that witness cooperation is not in widespread evidence. Roy Wilkins, executive director of the NAACP, is one of the most widely known black leaders in America. Reflecting a growing maturity on the part of this country's black community, Wilkins is calling for an end to excuses for explaining black criminality. What I objected to was that they are used hastily and in a pervasive fashion to cover every kind of crime, depending on the color of the victim and the color of the person accused. Uh, it is perfectly possible that poverty and discrimination can uh, be a cause for crime and a legitimate cause. Uh, I simply object to them being used as excuses to cover up every sort of crime without any investigation as to the particular uh, events of the crime itself. Gary, unlike Miami, is an industrial community built around giant steel mills, a principal source of air pollution for the area. U.S. Steel employs fully one-third of the Gary working force. Because of the economic turndown in recent years, U.S. Steel has dramatically cut back its payroll. At one time, Gary's unemployment rate reached 48%. City officials say now that unemployment has been reduced to just over 30 percent. City government in Gary is strongly influenced by black officials led by Mayor Richard Hatcher. Re-elected for a second four-year term in 1971, Hatcher has continually campaigned on the platform to clean up crime in the black-dominated community. I think that citizens are showing, and this is a fairly recent occurrence, they're beginning to show a kind of constructive concern. And so we have many of our citizens getting involved in uh, neighborhood patrols and uh, other things of that sort uh, where they are be being helpful in terms of uh, solving the problem. Mayor Hatcher was instrumental in setting up the system of neighborhood citizen patrols to help fight crime in Gary. For more than two years, black citizens had been personally involved, active participants in the omnipresent war on crime. Using a federal grant obtained by Mayor Hatcher, two-way radios have been installed in almost two dozen citizen cars. Paying for their own gasoline and donating their time, the neighborhood patrols cruise the streets to protect their homes and businesses. Unit 14 will be Um... The rough area right there, and I was looking at one when you wanted there. You got everything you want to do on any street, this area right here. Anything you want, you can find it right here. In these, what's in these three what's, blocks? These three blocks right here. 
From 18 to 19. Yes, but it, it has, but I can say one thing. I, I can say it's a uh, hundred percent better than it has been. You know, as many as 20 units are on the streets of Gary in a 24-hour period. The neighborhood patrols do not attempt to stop crime. Instead, their role is to report possible trouble spots to a central radio headquarters manned by a volunteer. The presence of the black volunteer crime stoppers is no secret. Gary police officials credit regular appearance of the patrol units as an effective deterrent to black crime. Take a look over you know, you check your side over there. Mm-hmm. See what, you, see what you see there. Yeah, this one here looks like it's in your How about that? Wait a minute. Look, time, wait, wait, wait a minute. How about yeah. that car right there? Yeah, you know but that? no, that's the But the citizen street patrols are not without some problems and criticisms. There are charges that the Gary police often ignore the tips and reports of the neighborhood cruisers. At the same time, there are weeks when units will not be on the streets, often due to poor organization or lack of coordination. And there has been some police opposition, mostly white officers, who complain that the neighborhood patrols only get in the way. Still, it is an indication of the growing concern about crime by the black community in Gary, and a meaningful attempt to do something about it. Much of the leadership for the black community's self-determination to stop crime has been provided by local church leaders. Five to ten groups, crime-fighting groups in the city of Gary now trying to save the city. Unfortunately, much of the problem is black on black perpetrating crime. We have to get to our black brothers and sisters for the salvation of us all. I'm confident, however, that the citizens of Gary are going to get together and save the city. It appears to me we have no other alternative. Citizens are moving slowly in direction of refusing to buy stolen merchandise. We have launched a campaign with bumper stickers, billboards, buttons, and what have you, trying to educate the public and realizing the real evil of promoting crime and perpetuating crime by buying the stolen goods. Take the profits out of burglaries, and we're well on the way of eliminating the problems thereof. In Miami, church leaders say they would like to be as active as their counterparts in Gary, think they should be, but so far they haven't been. Reverend Theodore Gibson talked with reporter Alan Nesbitt. Well, I think that the church must take a forthright position. I don't think the church can afford to back up. I think the church must do about crime as it does about everything else. That is a part of our mission, to teach people the right way of living. The church ought to go to work, I would think, and have a number of conferences in the neighborhoods and say to people, those who come to church, naturally we don't see the criminals, but we must say to the people who come to church, this is not the way to live, this will not pay off for you in the long run, and that it is only a matter of days before they come and do the same thing to you. This is the closest thing to an organized citizen effort in Miami to do something about crime, a march. A group calling itself Crack Community Rally Against Crime organized this 23-mile walk through Dade County on May 20th to dramatize the need for black citizens to actively work against crime. The group still has much to do before it can involve at a meaningful level the entire black community. And there are no plans now to send neighborhood patrol units into the streets, as is being done by citizen groups in Gary. One leader of this Saturday parade predicted that almost 3,500 persons would take part. In fact, only a few hundred participated. The purpose of this parade is to demonstrate community concern of reducing crime, as well as work towards fear, reducing fear, as well as reducing apathy and turning apathy into empathy. Psychologically, we, we want to show the community that there are people all over the community who are interested. And we planned as an initial step would start us to involve other people. I think it always began with the first initial step, and we think we have that step to involve the people. Miami's black community is made up of many different types of people, 
all with different views on the problem of crime. None of them like it, but just how serious it is and why it exists are points on which there is no agreement from those who might be called community leaders. Tom Washington, a businessman who owns a laundry plant. As a candidate for mayor, he spoke out more than two years ago on black criminality. At the time, his comments were not warmly received. But Washington told reporter Brian Ross that times have changed now. Oh yes, the community is definitely up in arm over crime. The narcotics problem out here is a tremendous problem that we have in the community that we hope that we can be cleared up. And also the job situation that breeds crime. For an example, the young fellow that attempted a robbery with a butcher knife because his family was hungry. He needed a job. We're right now in the middle of Germ City, which is probably the most densely populated area in Dade County. And when you begin to realize that many of the people that are statistics to some, and just names are, are really your neighbors and people that you live and work with on a day-to-day -day basis, then you can begin to see the need for a different approach towards dealing with the problem. We are the ones who are affected. It's, this crime is black on black. And... Uh, a lot of kids are going around with the clenched fists talking about right on and calling your brother, but they'll break in your house and steal your color TV and your stereo. So what can you do? The masses of black people in this community have little or no respect for the concept of law and order. For we visualize law and order as a racist term to say to us, let's keep the niggers in their place. Uh, I think that there are many other blacks who are far and few in between who understand the value of a society that needs adequate police protection, that needs adequate citizen participation in terms of the apprehension of criminals or alleged criminals. In dealing with black crime, one key stumbling block has often been the courts, says the NAACP's Roy Wilkins. Well, they are lenient in the sense that they turn them back on the community or they, they give them uh, uh, leeway or there is no room for them in the penal institutions or the probationary system falls down in investigation. So they just say, well, three months, six months, and he's out and on the streets in no time. For the black citizens of Gary, Indiana, says an aide to Mayor Hatcher, justice is merely a question of how much money you have. Most criminal cases end up in the county courts in nearby Crown Point. Here, the cost for beating a murder charge in the Lake County, Indiana courts is estimated at around $8,000. Gary's police chief, Boone, has publicly complained about white judges freeing black criminals who return to strike again in the black community. Often, to make sure black criminals are kept locked up at least for a short time, city prosecutors will change the charges so either city or federal courts will have jurisdiction. Citizen groups from Gary are also active in patrolling the courts showing up in court on days when known offenders are scheduled to start trial. They alert the news media and police if a criminal is freed. The court watchers have angered the judges in the county courts, one of whom is under federal indictment for income tax evasion. None of the jurists would comment on complaints that they are lenient with black criminals. In Miami, police and prosecutors with whom we checked had little complaint with the quality of justice being handed out. Miami Senior Judge Gerald Tobin says he has noticed an increased tendency on the part of the black community to come forward and testify in many cases. He translates this new willingness into increasing trust by the black community in the legal system. If NAACP leader Wilkins is speaking out more strongly against black criminality, he has good reason. White people uh, tend to believe that black crime is directed against white people. It's directed against black people. And they're the ones who need protection. And they're the ones who need law enforcement. Law and order you talk about, 
Well, they need a little law and order in the ghetto. There is a long list of black victims of black crime in Dade County, a few examples. On March 11th, a clerk in a food store was shot and killed by two armed black men. Two suspects were arrested on an anonymous tip from a black man. But the impact of the shotgun murder is still felt by the family of Mrs. Annie Ruth Oliver, the clerk at the store. This is where Mrs. Oliver lived at Northwest 13th Avenue and 62nd Street. Her apartment is now empty. For her three children, the shock was great. Two older sons moved away to live with relatives. But her 12-year-old daughter, Cheryl, still lives in the same community, in the same apartment building with an aunt and an uncle. She is a victim of black crime. I didn't want my mama to go. I wanted to stay here. I wanted her to stay, but I didn't want her to go. And since I heard it, I just said that I was just crying. So my grandmama had talked to me, and she told me, don't worry about it. In February 1971, Miami police officer Victor Butler was shot to death. Butler, a black, is believed to have been gunned down by black assailants who are still at large. Police at one point said the case could be solved if black witnesses would come forward. So far, no one has. For the three children of the police officer, the shock was great. But it was even greater for the officer's wife, who died last month. As they attended the funeral of their mother, the three orphans represented three more victims of black crime. The increase in black crime in the black community has led to new demands for better law enforcement in Miami's black community. There are those, however, who believe stronger police action will not do the job, that the root causes of crime are too deep. Mr. O'Connor, how significant are environmental influences in the development of crime in any society? I think they're very crucial factors in determining the crime rates of a given community or a part of a given community. I think when you look at the kinds of crime that we're most concerned with and the kinds of crime that make up the crime rates that we talk so much about, uh, you have two basic forms of deviant behavior, crimes against the person, uh, murder, rape, and aggravated assault, and then you have crimes against property, burglary, robbery, theft and auto theft. And I think in both of these areas, the, uh, the element of the housing condition, the, the level of economic well-being of people generally is a major determinant in figuring rates. A principal cause of crime, both police and college professors can agree, is the increased use of addictive drugs in the black community. This raid in Gary, Indiana, is one of many conducted every weekend on suspected drug sources. Often, Police Chief Boone leads the drug bus. In Miami and in Gary, police agree that drug addiction may have increased crime by as much as 50%. But because of the well-organized drug-selling structure in both communities, cracking down on the source of drugs is not easy. This raid netted few narcotics because someone on the police detective squad, Chief Boone told WCKT News, apparently tipped off drug sources to the raid. In another Gary raid filmed by WCKT News, this apartment loaded with stolen goods is believed to be the apartment of an addict who converts stolen appliances, liquor, and clothes into cash to satisfy his daily drug habit. But Gary has still another crime problem, white and black police officers, whom we observe taking for their personal use clothes, liquor, and appliances seized in this apartment. They justified their action with the logic that the goods probably could not be identified as stolen anyway. Both the mayor and the police chief are aware of problems on the force. Last year, more than 20 persons were brought before a civil service board on varying charges, but all 20 were acquitted by the white-controlled panel. Why are some uh, black leaders reluctant to uh, condemn the criminality of blacks? Uh, when, as you say, it causes havoc in the black community? Well, they, I can understand them, too. They don't want to lead the pack on their own people. Uh, 
my feeling is that slowly, of course, the black people of this country are growing up. They're assuming duties beyond the ghetto. What I object to and what irritates me more than anything else is this talk about soul sister and soul brother covering up a multitude of sins. Now, uh, a man is a bully, he's a bully. Uh, if he's a thief, he's a thief. If he's an embezzler, he's an embezzler. And just because I happen to be the same color he is, uh, doesn't make him like me or me like him. I, I couldn't, I wouldn't venture on what Brother Wilkins says. The only thing I'd say is that Brother Wilkins is not in Germ City, and I'm quite sure that 10 Columbus Circle uh, in Midtown in New York is quite different than Germ City, and it's quite different than Lenox Avenue, and it's quite different than Buttermilk Bottom in Atlanta, and it's quite different than the Desire section in New Orleans. These are the areas that I've been in, these are the areas I've worked in, and these are the areas that have those conditions. Nothing can be done until we mend that civil war within the police department. What civil war do you mean? That's the war between the racist PBA Association and the black policemen. As long as they maintain this attitude of racism against their fellow black policemen, they are not going to get the respect of the black people in this community. And everybody is sort of looking by this problem, but it's not going away. And the responsible leadership of this community must step up and take a stand and say, this has got to go. I think that all black behavior has its genesis in slavery. And I think that what we have to now understand is that more importantly today, there's a direct correlation between black behavior and environmental circumstances. In Richmond Heights, for example, here in this community, uh, there's a very low crime rate. These are people who have arrived into the mainstream of American society because of or in spite of. But nevertheless, there's a low crime rate in that community, which demonstrates and proves that those who have arrived in a capitalist society will act accordingly. But there remains in Gary a distinctly different attitude and approach toward crime. It is one that understands various social and economic problems, but still does not use them as excuses for crime. True, you have economic uh, breakdowns, you have unemployment, but it doesn't need necessarily lead to a life in crime. Uh, it's, that's a moral thing. Would you say then, Chief, that blacks are reacting more to black crime today? Yes, I think you are getting a reaction from an action. The blacks, well I say blacks because primarily uh, in most black communities, the ones who are committing cl uh, crimes are black and the people are sick and tired of it. Uh, and this whole belief that black people protect black criminals is wrong. The black man, after suffering years of injustice, has finally penetrated the white world of business and politics. To be sure, it has not been one without pain, or by many, nor is it a utopia. There are still more and better jobs, schooling and housing to be won. But it is a black struggle that cannot be equated by black crime. Sustained by this philosophy, a growing number of black Americans in Gary have shed their apathy in an effort to make the dangerous streets of this black ghetto safe to walk again by both black and white Americans. I would like to think that if more black leaders, more black people, speak out and act against crime in Miami, both black and white citizens may again walk the black streets of our own community. No miracles, just a start in Gary. The black leaders here are aware that to accept black crime would be suicide to the black cause. As Roy Wilkins put it, one can be proud of being black without embracing black crime. Richard Whitcomb, WCKT News, Gary, Indiana.